the Hot Corner Athletics fourth podcast. Um, today we're going to talk about travel baseball, high school baseball, college recruiting, um, choosing a school that I think is, is really good for you rather than picking the whole prestige of a certain level. Um, and our guest today is, is my brother-in-law, Casey Guerin, who played um, high school baseball in this area, um, went to a really, really competitive junior college, and then just finished up his last year um, at a state university school, uh, SUNY Oswego, which is very competitive regionally as well. So um, first off, Case, I just want to talk a little bit about kind of your path through baseball, kind of who you are, how you got into playing the game and wanted to go into college and play, um, but then kind of your experiences through the different levels. I think what's interesting for me with this is that um, you play travel baseball locally on a really good team. Your high school team was competitive. Your junior college team went to a national championship, and then your 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 college team, your four-year school, also competed in a regional. So instead of the the idea of going Division One or bust or going Division Two for a big scholarship, I want to talk today a lot about the relationships that you made along the way and the competitiveness that you guys had. So just a little bit about yourself, your background, where you came from, and then we'll kind of go from there. Yeah, what's up, Tom? Thanks for having me on. Glad to be on. So uh, my background, uh, family of six, uh, two parents, um, great, great upbringing. Uh, they taught us, like, no matter what, you got to work hard for what you want. Um, love playing baseball. I've been playing since I was a kid. Uh, couldn't ask for a better upbringing. But uh, I think that, like, the most important thing I learned as a kid was that it doesn't matter what level you play or what college you go to. But, like, if you're going to do something and you love it, then you better work hard for it to be as good as you can personally. Like, um, like you're going to realize sometimes, like, you might not be able to be as good as other kids. But I think the most important thing for kids that listen to this is to just try and get the most out of yourself to be the best that you can be personally. And I think growing up, I, I realized just through the kids that I played with that I love to win. I know it's not as important for everybody, but uh, winning's fun. Like everybody's heard that statement before. It's fun to win. And uh, so for me, like even from a young age to now being done with college baseball, winning was always the most important thing for me. So every second of the day, because winning was so important to me, I try and think about every second, what can I do right now to help my team win? And I think that really helped me develop as a baseball player. Yeah. So, so going into that, like, and, and that's the reason why I was so excited about having you on here, because, you know, when I look at a lot of athletes, like I could easily try and go and find a former teammate. Um, we played on some good teams, but the cool thing about watching you i mean i watched you grow all the way through travel baseball with with the niagara junior purple eagles you guys were extremely competitive um a lot of guys went on to play at the next level your ace arm is in the padres organization like that's something that you were able to take away from that and the one thing i saw was that you know you and, and a lot of other people may not have been that dan dallas the best player on the team but your roles on that team were just as important moving into high school i remember watching the best game i watched you guys play you pitched in that game and it wasn't like you were uh, maybe that year you were, but it's not like you were this college pitcher that was going to go on and, and throw 95 miles an hour, but you were extremely effective in high school because you competed. And then going into junior college, you know, your role changed a little bit to They needed you to hit a little bit more and, and, you know, outfield was kind of something that you did, but you, you were there to hit and you guys did well. And you and Matt, who obviously we talked about a lot on the podcast before um, Matt cross with the A's, um, you guys were a big piece of that, you know, national championship um, run that you guys had. And then going into your four year, I see that the role changes again. So the, so the one thing that's exciting about this um, was the idea of you understood your role on your team. And I was the same kind of guy. I had a role whenever I played, too. It wasn't like I was the best player. I played with a lot of draft picks, but it wasn't like I was the guy that they were looking for the big hit in the big situation. I may have been the guy that walked earlier in the inning that was on third base for the big guy to come up and score me. And it kind of seems like that that's that same thing with you. So going back to travel ball, I know a lot of parents and, and players and teams and people, they look for this prestige of a ball or national team or B level, or, you know, I must not be that good at baseball if I play on a B team or, you know, I made the A team, so I must be a stud. The one thing that I look at with your team that you had is you had a huge wide range of people that were on your team. You had some really talented guys. You had some role guys. You had your studs. Um, you had obviously you had your bench guys. 
you know, what made you guys so good? And, and did you guys, were you guys just ultra talented or was it the, the development each year that made you guys better? Cause I remember you guys going to tournaments and winning and being competitive and what made you guys so good in the travel ball circuit? I think the most important thing for kids to realize when picking a travel ball team is go somewhere that you can play. It doesn't matter what level it is, A team, B team. It really doesn't matter. Just go where you can play. As a kid, the most important part about developing and the only way to get better is to just play. If you don't play, you can't get any better. You know, play, practice as much as you can. Um, for younger kids, I don't know how many younger kids are listening, but for younger kids, just play as much as you can. Right. And then once you get to like high school years, almost the same thing, like find somewhere you can play, but maybe at a little higher level, maybe go somewhere where you might not start right away, but where you have to earn a spot, which will help you develop more. But yeah, with our team, it was 12 to 13 guys. Everybody just wanted to win really bad. Everybody was just super competitive. I wouldn't say we were the most talented team, like the most talented travel team. Like, there's a lot of teams that spit out D1, 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 D1. I think most of the kids on our team ended up playing college baseball or being college baseball players at some school. But we really didn't have, like, that many Division One kids. I think we only had one or two Division One players. But every single time we stepped on the field, every kid on the team just wanted to win more than everybody else. And kind of like I said earlier, like, every kid on the team, every second of the day, whether it be in the weight room or whatever, it was like, how can we win? And that was for travel ball, not even for college. It was like, when we show up to the park today, like, how can we win the game today? And everybody just wanted it more than everybody else. Yeah. So I know, I know for me, like, it's pretty much all about winning. But there is there is fun in it. Like, like travel ball should be fun. I think the most important part about travel ball, like I said, is first playing. And then second, I think you just, you need to surround yourself with other kids that want what you want. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. And, and the cool thing about your team, too, is is it seemed like everybody was on the same page when it came to, to winning and working hard, which which pushed everybody to get better. But the but the one thing that I see a lot of times with with travel baseball now is we get so many people that they jump from team to team to team to team every single year. And so they never really get to mold and mesh with a group of kids. And the one cool thing that I liked about um, your team, it seemed like you guys hung out outside of outside of baseball you guys hung out at baseball you guys pushed each other there was that level of it didn't really matter yes you're my friend but if i see you slacking at practice i'm going to make sure that i push you to become a better a better baseball player and to help our team right now and i think that 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 says a lot about the team that you guys did have and why a lot of you guys went on to play in college because a lot of times kids move and move and move because they think that, you know, this team's better than that one or I didn't make this one. You know, something something pushes them to change all the time. And so even at the elite levels of travel baseball in this area, I don't really see a lot of the kids hanging out outside of baseball practice. And I think to be an effective teammate and to be an effective baseball player, you have to actually like the people that you're playing with because then it becomes more of a brotherhood rather than rather than it being just a team that tries and goes out to, to showcase your skills. A lot of colleges, and this is coming from a college recruiter, a lot of colleges are going to go look at the better teams. Better That's 100% teams, right. 100%, and, yeah. And better teams always have guys that like each other. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, uh, even, even top talented D1 guys, like they don't, you know what I mean? Like they, they might be good talent, but what happens when you run into a team that has really good talent and like each other? They're going to yeah. get beat. The farther, I mean, the farther you make it in a tournament, the more looks you're going to get. Yep, absolutely. And I mean, winning doesn't have everything to do with it. But like I said, when you start to get into high school and you really decide, like, okay, I want to get serious about baseball, I want to play in college, surround yourself with other kids that want what you want. If you want to be a college baseball player, go play with other kids that want to be college baseball players. And if that has to be changing teams – then make that switch, but stay. Yep. Absolutely. You know, like I, I always learn, like if you weren't playing or like if you weren't the kid that started every game, you know, then like work for it and earn it. Like get get there, like personally get there. Like if you're not doing something to earn that spot, then you're not working hard enough and you're probably not going to be ready to play college baseball anyway if you ha- don't know what it's like to earn a spot. Like with our team, 
every kid wanted it really bad. And even in travel ball, like if you weren't helping us win, then you didn't play. Right. And then, and then you got to figure out like, how can I help us win? But yeah. Uh, so I joined, I think 15 U when the team was and like two thirds of the team were together since 10 U and I joined 15 U and I was 14. So I was a year younger than everybody else. So right. I was, I was kind of the new kid that didn't know anyone. Right. And everybody was kind of like, who the heck is this kid? And then when I started practicing and we started playing games and it, you realize like, okay, all these kids want the same thing that I want. And then I ended up, we ended up playing three or four summers together practices all winter. And it really helps when you can love the kids that you play with. I'm still best friends with everybody that I played with in travel ball. Just uh, find yourself, get yourself in a good environment to be successful personally and like athletically find a coach, even whether it be a coach or a team, find somebody that wants what you want. That's going to make you better as a person and athletically. Like a lot of the things that I learned about myself, even, even personally, like as a person growing up, becoming a man, instead of just being a kid or from my teammates or from my travel ball coaches. And I, I think what you said is great about staying together, uh, Travel ball is where you find your best friends outside of school because once high school is over, everybody kind of leaves, but like you'll always have your travel ball kids. If you play together, like I was on one team from eight years old to 15, all those kids are still my best friends and I had to leave. I, I left. I made the decision to leave because the kids that I was playing with didn't want what I want. They weren't into going to the next step and playing college baseball. And that's what I wanted. So I left for another team to play with kids that wanted what I wanted. Right. I don't think, I don't think enough can be said about the kids that I played with in travel ball. Um, it really wasn't, it wasn't a talent thing. Why we won. It, everybody just wanted to win so bad. Everybody knew what their role was. Everybody had a job and everybody did their own job. Like if I was hitting well, I would bat fourth behind Dan Dallas and I went to Juco and he got drafted and he probably could have got drafted as a hitter. Or if I wasn't hitting, I would bat seventh or eighth or ninth. And it really helped me learn. I think another important thing for kids is that you almost should go somewhere where you're not going to start right away. Yep. If you can, if you can make a team with a lot better kids, even not, not a lot better, just kids that are slightly better than you. Like, if you want to be a college baseball player, you need to surround yourself with kids that are a little better than you. If you're the best kid on a bad team, you're not going to work as hard. But if you're playing with kids that are a little better than you, then you're going to work a lot harder because you know you need to do a lot more to play. Like when I showed up with the Junior Purple Eagles, like I wasn't even close to the best player or the most talented. Well, like I got surrounded by so many kids and I was like, wow, I really need to start doing something to get better if I want to play on this team and play in college. So that's that's how it was. It was just a good environment. Surround yourself in the right environment with good coaches and good kids. And I think another huge part is make sure you're with good kids. Good, good kids with good parents and a good and a good coach. Yeah. I, even even if you go to a team with a bunch of talented kids, there will always be trouble and tra trouble in travel baseball if there's bad parents or disrespectful families. And I'm really thankful I ended up where I did. Every single parent was so nice. Everybody was so caring and supportive. And it's nice to have that when you can get with nice families, nice people, good people who all want the same thing. When everybody, when everybody wants the same thing, which we'll get into with college, when everybody wants the same thing, that's when good things really start to happen. So like my, my major advice, I've already said it. If you're a kid, find out what you want personally, take that time to find out what you want and surround yourself with people that want the same thing. Yeah, I think, I think that's so big and it, and it speaks to life too. And I know um, at the hitting philosophy at Hot Corner, the, the philosophy at Hot Corner in general is we're not only trying to make you really good athletes, but we also want you to be good people when you get out of this thing too, because baseball ends for baseball ends for everybody. 
Um, the people that we watch on TV have such a luxury, but it also ends for them too. Um, and so it, what we can learn throughout the game, I think, I think is what we can take into the rest of our lives. And that's why I love the game so much. And you, you hit on a really good point. I think that the people that you surround yourself with is, is that's who you are. You know that's what I mean? Exact, that's it. hundred percent. Exactly. You are, you are a product of who you're hanging out with. Yep. Especially in high school where everybody starts going their separate ways, kind of at the end of high school, you get the kids that are really serious about it and you get the kids that aren't and just want to play high school and be done. Yeah. So some kids, some kids, like some kids that want to play college baseball, sometimes not being around your high school teammates is actually a good thing. Absolutely. Because some, some of those kids don't surround yourself with kids that will hold you back. Yep. No doubt. And I think that that's such a big point because like, even in life, like even with me right now with, with doing the work that I'm doing, if, if I surround myself with people who don't have the same goals in mind as me, then I'm not, I'm not going to be able to be as successful as we want within, let's say our, our careers, right? Like, and, and everybody's going to have their own career that they, that they go on. And let's say like, for me, I like to win too, right? I'm, I'm, I love to win. I think winning and I think providing value is so important in, in my life for sure. So, so if I want to, if I want to win in the work that I do, well, then I need to surround myself with people who have that same vision. If I just have people in here that are just kind of coming in to leave to, you know, not provide a ton of value, well, then that's going to actually tarnish my reputation as, as hot corner. And so I think for travel baseball, it gets so diluted because I think people just want to play it. Sometimes you do need to fail. Sometimes you do need to go into a championship game and you need to be the guy that's sitting on the bench. Well, maybe that's going to be the push that you need to work harder for the next off season or for the next couple months until or the next couple weeks until you get to that championship game. You've got to feel what it feels like to not win if that's something that you value so that you start to work hard enough to get back to there. And I think that that's such a big point with travel baseball, because a lot of people are changing teams just to change teams. And I think if you can find an environment where you've got good families with good kids and good coaches that really love what they do and, and really are in it for the benefit of the kids. And then all you guys actually like each other. Like I remember for me, travel baseball is huge. We used to travel all over the country. Those are your best friends. We, and they yeah. always will be. Yep. When we came from different places and different areas and the, and the greatest thing in the entire world is I can call any of them right now. And if I needed something, they would do whatever they could to make sure that I was taken care of. And I have and I haven't lived in that area in years, you know, and I think that that's such a big thing to take away. And I, and I heard this the other day and it, it definitely hurt me a little bit because I heard for the other day of, of a kid talking about his travel team. Very, very, very good travel team. And he said, I, I mean, I talked to one guy from my team outside of outside of practice and I'm like, man, like, where's the culture at in that? You know, how are we going to develop a culture that's going to help you guys win? Like, maybe you guys are extremely talented. I get that. Good for you guys. But winning championships is not about talent most of the time. Even it, not winning high school, like travel ball championships is not the end all be all. Correct. Either. Right. Like I was I had the pleasure of winning a lot. We don't, we rarely lost, but it, it was, but it was because of the environment that we had. Yep. It's when, like when you're choosing a travel ball team, it's about the environment and the fit rather than the kids on it, I would say, or rather than like the talent level of the team. It's about the fit, get with good parents, families, kids, and get with kids that want what you want. And I think when you do that, then you'll really start to find success personally. And it's okay to not be the best kid on the team. I you should if you find a team and you find a spot and there's kids better than you that work harder than you, then then hang out with them every day. Yep. You know, I used to have a kid in high school. He was on my high school team. I didn't play travel with him, but he really wanted to be great. Like he re wanted to be really, really good. He wanted to go play college baseball and be good. And he worked really hard for it. So I was like, all right, let's go. Like he bought a cage in his backyard. It's like, all right, let's go hit every day. Or all right, let's throw every day. And then it's like, all right, hey, coach, can we get in early in high school? Can we use the gym? You know, and the kids that wanted that went. The kids that didn't, didn't go. Yep. And I think that that's, I think that that's such a big point because, you know, 
like for you, there are going to be days, and I, and I tell people this all the time. We talked about this in baseball school. You got to understand the difference between motivation and discipline. There are going to be some days when you wake up in the morning and you just do not want to go to the field early. If you have a group of people around you that are pushing you to be better, you're going to be there whether you want to be there or not because you're disciplined and those are the people that are holding you accountable. And I think that having those kinds of people around are so big. Um, and, and so travel baseball, just to kind of recap the travel baseball side of things, is find the right fit for you. Development is number one. Get better. Yeah, yeah. development. Fine. Play as much as you can. Practice yep. as much as you can. Like I said, uh, I came from a family with six kids. Almost all of us played with baseball. My parents went from practice to practice to practice every day. Um, somehow find a way, a team or something to practice as much as you can. Like uh, even with my little brother, how we were saying like, oh, just play as many games as you can in the summer. Just play, play, play. That's the only way you're going to get better is just to play. As a kid, yep. when you start getting a little older, it's more about developing your skills. Yep. Just play as much as you can. Find the right fit for travel. Play as much as you can. Yep. And then and then moving into uh, – I'll move into the junior college stuff in a second. But just to kind of recap from a development side of things, like for me as a, as a skill coach, it's really difficult to assess a kid that I don't have legitimate game proof of how they do. It's really mm -hmm. difficult because I can look at your swing and maybe in a cage you, your swing doesn't look great. But what happens when you're the guy who's performing outside? You know, you might be the guy that I don't touch and your swing yeah. doesn't look perfect. So I think a lot of times from a development side of things, like going back to what we kind of do inside the cage is um, find a fit for you where you're going to practice and play a lot and develop. And then, and then if you are going to a skill coach, which I'm not the only skill coach in the world, if you're going to somebody else, it's great. Um, but you need to give them game evidence. They need to know how you perform in a game. Like yeah. you have great timing and BP, but what happens when you get outside and struggle? So I think finding an area where number one, you're not the best player on the team and you're being pushed by somebody else is huge playing as much, practicing as much as you can and focusing number one on development. So for a lot of you, nine, 10, 11, 12 year old kids and parents out there, don't worry about whether you're playing a level, B level, C level. I've got oh, a, oh. I've got a kid right now who is a B level player, 11 years old. He's now playing on one of the best national teams in the country. Like it literally does not matter. Your development matters. So when you guys are working on getting better, who cares? Just go play, right? There might be a B team that's playing 45 games and there might be an A team that's playing 25 games. If you need to play more baseball, go play on the B team that's going to play 45 yeah, games. Yeah, play, play the 45 games. That's, that's going to help you. No doubt. Um, so I, I want to move into junior college. So, so for the guys out there and the people out there that don't really know, Niagara County Community College is a – Division three junior college, absolute powerhouse. They go to the regional national championship almost pretty much every single year. Dudes are getting drafted. They're getting guys to go division one all the time. Um, you know, a lot of guys are going to Canisius is where I went. They got pitchers going to coastal Carolina. They got a guy that committed to Mississippi state before. I mean, they got guys all over the place. Um, one of our trainers at hot corner, Matt cross went to end trip and he was drafted by the Oakland athletics in 2018. Um, like division three junior college. Easy turnoff for people that are like, oh, I want to go Division One, or oh, I want to go to a Division One JUCO, or if I'm going to junior one college, of those people, you need to listen to the rest of this. So. Absolutely, 100%. And this is for you because I was a Division One or bus guy. Okay, this is a great conversation to have. When I was in high school, I was the person that said, I'm going Division One no matter what it takes. Looking back on it, thank goodness it worked for me. It worked out. I got lucky. But if I was to do this the right way from the beginning again, I probably should have gone to a junior college. The reason for that, I needed more development. I spent my entire first year at a Division One school on the bench. I had 18 at-bats. Okay, I did not redshirt. I lost a full year and I didn't play. The greatest thing that I could have ever done was go to a junior college and develop for another year. I got lucky. Okay, I walked into a spot after that and I, I happened to play. But I think the junior college route for guys that need to develop is huge. I see it so much. Like guys at end trip, guys are going in at 84, 85 miles an hour. They're leaving there at 91, 92 miles an hour. Um, so a little bit of background on junior college. There's, there's very limited restrictions on the amount of practices that you can do. There's very limited restrictions on the amount of stuff that you can do for your team. You can practice for three, four, five hours if you wanted to. Lift as much as you want. There's a lot of restrictions at Division One, Division Two, and Division Three levels for practices. So the reason why I like junior college is because it gives you less of a restriction on how much you can develop especially if you are a guy who needs it to get in more. I want to talk about what made Niagara County Community College different the years that you were there. Why were you guys different? 
And what is what's a positive that you take out of, of being at N trip that, you know, maybe different from the four year that you were at or maybe different from the travel ball that you were at? What made you guys so good? Because I think that that's something that a lot of people need to hear for sure. Uh, it's all about being good friends with your teammates, I think, to do with it and being competitive within your own team. Um, when you, well, like you said with Juco, you can practice as much as you want. So it's, we're going to practice for four or five hours today until we get it right. It's about perfecting things and doing things the right way. And it's, it's a competition against your teammates. Uh, good programs, great teams and good programs. It's, it's us or it's themselves versus themselves. Yep. It's like you at Canisius or at me at any of my programs or anybody that's been at a good college program. It's not how are we going to beat this other team? It's how are we going to out like outperform ourselves? Yeah. Like, how are we going to get better against each other? Because that's what's going to make us the best team that we can be. Yeah. It's, it's different. It's different from a coaching standpoint, because from as a coach, you're thinking, how can we beat this team? Yeah. But as a player, it's how am I going to make my teammates better today? And how am I going to get better today? And that's a hundred percent what Juco baseball is. Yeah. Juco is, is so many hours at the field and so many hours in the weight room every single day, six or seven days a week. You're with the same guys every hour of the day in school, practice, weight room, hitting extra work. It's, like I said, when everybody at Entrip just wants the same thing. When you show up the first day of practice, you're not, no matter who you are, you're not treated special. It's like, all right, you're going to, you got to figure out how to help this team win. And like, if you, if you're not one of the guys that's going to help win, then you're not going to be around. Yep. And and the one thing that I like about what you said was, was you guys are practicing for four or five hours until you get it right. You really, like I said, and I said this with travel, but you really got to like the people that you're with. And the reason why I say that is because, like, you're going to be with them more than you're with your families. Yeah, like, yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Like, 100%. So if you don't like, like, think about this. The reason why you like going home is because you actually like the people in your house. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The reason why I like going home is I like the people that are in my house. But but if I didn't, but but think about this. Imagine if I went to practice every single day and I didn't like who I was around. You think I'm going to stay there very long? Go to class, 8 or 9 a.m. Yep. Go home at 8 o'clock. Yep. And division one baseball. If you're if you're a junior college player, you go home to grab food because you're probably local. If yep. you're a commuter. But the most important, I don't know, like JUCO is such a good opportunity to develop because you're practicing every day. Yep. I, I from what I've experienced in four years, if unless you're going to a legitimate division one program or a legitimate division two program. If you're not going to play in your first two years, unless you're going to one of those schools, like if you go like most kids, like if you're going to a power five school division one, you're probably not going to play right away. Right. But that's okay because you know, they're going to develop you. Yep. But if you're not one of those kids and you're going to go to any school and they're going to tell you, you know what, you're probably not going to play for two years. Then just, Go to junior college. Yep. Because okay. you're you're getting you're you're getting two years of your degree cheaper, a much cheaper, so the academic side of it, and you're going somewhere where you can practice every single day, lift every single day, and be surrounded by other kids that want the same thing that you do. And at Antrip, it's it's all about it's it's the competitive mindset. It's you're gonna show up every day. And if you're not doing something to help us get to a national championship, then you're just going to be left behind. Yep. It's either get on with the train or you're not, or you're not going to be on for it. You're going to be gone or you're not going to play on the train. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Either get on the train or get off. And there it was like with Matt cross who got drafted, like me and Matt cross or Matt cross and I, show up in the weight room after a five hour practice. It's all right. Who's going to lift more today? Like who's going to lift more weight today? Like yeah. I'm going to like, I'm going to squat more than you today, or I'm going to bench more than you today. And if you, and if you weren't in that group of guys that did it and you got left behind yep. and if you're one of those guys that gets left behind, then 
you don't get to enjoy the success that comes after it. Yep. And, le- and let's talk about the experience a little bit because um, – so I was lucky enough. I played a Division one school, and we won a, cha- we won a couple championships, right? So I was very, very fortunate for that. But but I, I have this conversation with a lot of kids at Hot Corner a lot, and I say to them, would you rather go to a Division one school that doesn't compete and that you sit for a couple years, or would you rather go to a junior college or Division three school where you're going to compete for a national championship every year? I mean, ultimately, what's it come down to? You're playing an extra four years of baseball. First off, yeah. that's a, that's a you're lucky enough to be able to do that. You know how many kids I know that stopped playing baseball after high school? Tons, right? So the fact that you even get to play an extra four years is, is yeah. extremely valuable. And then on top of that, on top of that, what's the experience going to be like? I mean, dude, I like I watched every single inning that you guys play in the regional World Series because that is that's awesome baseball. It's, it's and just to go more on like, oh, JUCO isn't as good. Uh, the teams that we played in the World Series have like one of the team one of the programs just had like four kids drafted this year division three juco yep like all these teams are sending i think when we went to the world series there was like four or five kids that ended up being draft picks yep and they were like early draft picks too like we had two kids Uh, another team had a draft pick like 15th round another team had an all-american that sent a kid to Ole miss there there are if you find the right junior college, there are kids at junior college that are better than some players I see going to Division One schools. No doubt, and I think, and there, I think there really is like there is 100%. talent. There's so much talent now. Like you don't have to go Division One. I. I think like the most important, unless you're just an absolute stud, junior college is an opportunity to play, get better, and learn the game the game of college baseball. If you were if you were a stud in high school, that doesn't mean you're going to translate to college. College baseball is a completely different game, completely different atmosphere. When you go to college, it's it's not it's it's how am I going to help the team win now? Yep. That's why NCCC was so good because we worked really hard. Uh, we got yelled at a lot. Yep. We got screamed at every day. Oh, nice. And when you're in it, when you're in it, it's like, why am I getting yelled at? Like, like we're not even doing anything wrong. Or it's like, like coach, we just swept a team. Like, why are we getting yelled at? Like we won, we had a 19 game winning streak and we ran in between a double header, did sprints up and down the field. And everybody's like, what's going on? Like, why, like, why is this happening? And it's like, you're not beating bad teams by enough. And you yeah. don't realize that when you're in it, and then you leave and it's, and it's, we're not playing down to our competition. It's like, we're, like I said, it's, we're competing against ourselves. Like we're yep. trying to be the best that we can be no matter who we can play. It's, it's, you show up to class. It's who's going to get in Juco. It's who's going to get better grades in school. And it's at practice. Who's going to have like, who's going to be the one that screws up practice today that makes us have to run. Like, right. no, that's not going to be me. I'm going to have a perfect practice today so we don't get in trouble. And it's, wow, like Matt Cross is getting scouts or this kid's getting that school. Like, I want that. Yep. And when you see other kids getting stuff like that, it's like, wow, I really want that. Like, I need to change something to do that. Yep. And I think and I think going on to that point, too, like like you even said it earlier, like you're in a battle against yourself and your team. So. It's so not about, it's, it's not a battle against other teams. It's not results. It's not results. I remember a lot of times, like we were going and we'd sweep a team and we're all happy. And it's like, get back to the drawing board. Like yeah, we, you get, you, you, take, you get a three game sweep, but you know, you didn't play your best baseball. Right. And you get, so it's you, like, you, you get gotta, yelled at for it. We got to go back to practice. We got to grind and we got to get better. And I think that that's what a lot of people don't, I, I, it, it's knowledge, right? I'm trying to just give out as much knowledge as we can. Like, I think yeah. a lot of people just don't understand. It's not their fault. They've never been in it. Like we've been fortunate enough to be in it, but like, yeah, for us, yeah. like, remember, like, when you're developing your athletes, like, when you're developing your players on your travel team, when you're developing your individual, like, your kids or, you know, people that you care about, like, remember that this is, there, there is no end result to this whole thing. Yeah. Like, like, even if you win a national, like, okay, so you guys are national runner-up um, in, in the national championship, right? You guys had an awesome year. Last a lot two of guys teams in the whole country. Best two teams in the country. And like, I, think, I guarantee. Like, people don't, don't even give, like, enough, like, they don't give us enough credit for that. Right, like your best two teams in the country at that level in of baseball whole, in the whole country, and I, like I, I promise you, like I said, the teams that we played, like you'll get some Division One programs 
where your number one will throw what like 88 to 90 yeah 91 yep we, we went to the world series in junior college and kids were throwing 92 93 94 95 the same and in the, the same high, thing yeah the same well, thing well high levels of baseball are the same but remember this though too and this is a great point is if it's really about development, which I believe that it is, a lot of people are look at results, but results really don't last that long, right? I mean, we know that, right? Baseball is such a, if it's such a fluctuating game, so we can't really look at results all the time. If you're really focused on development, do a self-assessment, realize and figure out where you're at at that current time. And if you're not a Division One athlete, that doesn't mean it's final. Oh, wow. Go and find a school, go and find a place where you can actually compete and where you can go in there and learn. And then maybe the opportunity is there for you. But the one thing that you said that I really liked and I want to touch on this is pro baseball. OK, and, and I know this because I, I do a lot of stuff with the Yankees and, and I understand kind of their scouting and how they do things. They could care less if you're where at you Texas college. From. They could yeah, care yeah. less if you're at Niagara County Community College. They don't care where you're at. They don't care if you're at the worst, smallest high school in the entire country. If you can play baseball, OK, if you can play really, really play baseball, they're going to find you at some point. You're going to get looked at. You're going to have opportunities. You know what I mean? And, and, and yes, does the ACC and the Pac-12 and the SEC, do they have dudes that are going to be in the big leagues that you're going to watch on TV? Sure. Sure, absolutely. You're going to, those are the guys you're going to see in the first round. I'm not saying that you can't be a first rounder from, from this area, but you're looking at like a lot of those guys were already drafted. They're going to be drafted again. That's a different prestige and a different level. But, for instance, at Niagara the, uh, last year, two years ago, they had a guy that went in the fourth round, right? Like, like they're going yeah. to find you. You're Out going Niagara to University. Yeah, Niagara University. And then end trip. Guys drafted all the time. You know what I mean? So, so realistically, just understand where your development is at the time. Figure out what's best for you at that specific time. And then go and then, and then continue to develop and find a program that works for you. I see a lot of kids now. They, it's they all get about a, the fit. They get a school that reaches out to them. And then they're like, well, what can I do to go there? Well, hold on a second. Take a step back. What happens if that's not the right school for you? You know, we're doing a lot of conversations right now with this whole with with catching with this whole one knee down versus primary secondary position and how Major League Baseball is doing the one knee thing. And um, what happens if you're a one knee down guy and an organ in an organization or a college program that that you want to go to that you think is great doesn't allow you to do that? I'm not saying don't go there, but that just might not be the right fit because it's not going to allow you to perform at your level. And help exactly. you the best that you can. So, for instance, like find a school that's going to allow you to adapt and develop as an athlete. Don't go to a school just based on the name of it. I made that mistake. I got lucky. I happened to go into a program where I liked the people that I was with, and we won a lot. And our, my coach pushed me every single day. It worked, but it doesn't work for everybody. I can't tell you how many times I've had a kid go to a school and call me and be like, "Dude, I hate it here, and I want to go into the portal and I want to leave." And and so that conversation. Are- so hard in school now right and so are going to school and leaving and hating it figure out what fits for you you know and yeah so figure out the best fit it doesn't matter what level it is it really doesn't yeah. i played junior college in division three and some of the kids that i've played with and some of the kids that i played against are better than a whole lot of division one kids that i've seen 100 percent. and there's a lot of and honestly dude there's a lot of kids that will go to a division one school and may not have the opportunity, not because they're not good enough, may not have the opportunity because somebody else is in there, and they leave and they go to Division three school. It happened at your school. Yeah, a guy yeah. went from N-Trip to Canisius to Oswego. Yeah. That dude's still a, a Division one talent. He's still a really good athlete. Fantastic player, yeah. Fantastic, really good athlete. Find, it just didn't find the right – well, when you're looking for college, find the right coach, find the right environment that you want. You have to have a good relationship with him. I – like N Triple C might not be the best fit for everybody. It was yeah. for me because N Triple C is you have to work harder than every single kid on your team every day just to play. Yeah. Just to get an inning. Like you have to work harder than everybody. Yeah. It's it's almost it's like cutthroat in a good way. Yep. It's just you push, you're getting pushed. It's there's forty kids on a roster. It's it's me versus you. Like, hey, I don't care if you're starting over me because you're helping the team win better, but I'm coming. Right. And that and that's how it is. And that's how it is at good programs. It's right. It's like, yeah, you might be better than me now, but it's I'm gonna make you better, like you're gonna make me better. And I think the most like 
even with the travel wall part, I want to touch on that for one more second. You'll find that you'll get more scouts and coaches looking at you when you stop worrying about yourself and start worrying about how you're going to help the team win. Yep. Well, like scouts will, will start to notice you when you're the guy that's, if you're on the bench, always cheering for your team, who's the loudest one on the bench in high school or travel, like they'll notice the guy that's screaming his head off for his teammates strikes out four times, still picks up all his teammates, no matter what, like the most important part and you'll really start to find success as a player and start getting looks is when you start doing the little things right, being a good teammate, being a good, being coachable. It's it's not about how talented am I, how can I get to Division One. When you sit down and you think, how can I beat out the guy next to me? Keep it small, keep it concise. How am I going to beat the other center fielder on my team or the other shortstop on my team? And when you can compete against each other like that in a controlled environment, when you can compete against your own teammates and it's who's going to help the team win better, that's when you start to find yourself having more success. Like, yep. I think I think in the beginning of the year for NCCC, my freshman year, we knew we had talent. We knew we were really good. And the difference between the beginning of the year and the end of the year in the national championship was that every guy on the roster was – how am I going to help the team win? Yep. And if you're you... going to, you're going to get more coaches, coaches to look at you, excuse me, when you're doing that, when you're in the game, how you're winning, how you go about yourself, your body language, your hustle, being a good teammate, all those things make more of a difference than, oh, I'm just more talented than everybody else, or, oh, I can hit the ball harder than everybody else. And, and I'm going to go into two points, and the first one is um, probably a lot of people are watching the Michael Jordan thing right now on, on ESPN every Sunday night. I know I have, and, and MJ, best basketball player of all time, team guy, right? Huge team guy. Uh, Derek Jeter, one of the greatest shortstops to ever live, second unanimous guy in the Hall of Fame, team guy, right? You look at all these elite athletes that have ever played, elite elite athletes it's team first yeah. you know, and, and and the reason for that is because it's it, there's a benefit i mean i mean let's let's take the selfishness out of it there's a benefit to you if you're a team guy if you're a team guy you, a lot of good things are going to come to you it helps a lot more than you think no doubt and, and for everybody listening it really does help so much more so, so much it helps helps the team and your teammates and yourself yeah and and the, you're, you're playing in a game and there's a runner on second base and nobody out and you ground out to second base. That, that was the difference from us being a winning team, like a, a good team to a great team. It's not like, it's not about yourself in college. College baseball isn't about that. It's not about yourself. You're like, if you, if you do what's best for the team, you're moving runners over you're scoring guys, you're not playing selfish, your stats will come. Like we had we had uh, my sophomore year, Mike O'Connor, if you remember him. Yep. Great kid, awesome kid, super nice. He he never hit the ball that hard. He was he wasn't a 95 exit below guy. He was he worked out every day, he worked hard, and every single time he did his job. He moved the runner over, sacrificed somebody, and he ended up adding 400. Yep. Like he, just by doing his job. Like when you, it's crazy to think about, but when you're doing stuff that helps the team, you're going to look back and realize, wow, my stats are a lot better that way than they yep. are, than they would be if I just tried to hit a home run every time because I wanted to go from JUCO to Division One. And same thing for me. Like I had to understand my role. My role is a is a nine hitter. And I said in the last podcast, I'll say it again. Like my role as a nine hitter wasn't to. I'm not. I'm not there to have 75 RBIs. I'm not there to bat 400. I'm, I was there to. How many times can you get on base in a game so we can turn this lineup over with pressure? And how many times can you be effective on hit and runs, bunts, moving runners over, and do the intangible little things? I felt like that. I, I felt a ton of pride in that. You know what I mean? My, the, my yeah, coach, you should. You have to. My coach did a really good job of making sure that that role was – I had to embrace that role. Did You know what? Like, And I'll tell you straight up, and I, everybody's like this. Do I, did I want to bat fourth? Sure. 
Everybody wants to be the guy that back in the middle country who wants to hit third or fourth. Yeah, but guess what? Like Connor Panis, who was drafted in the ninth round, and Brett Sitto and Jesse Pushchak, guys who hit, you know, double digit home runs every single year, let them bat in the middle of the order. I want to be on base for when it happens. And I understood and embraced that role because at the end of the day, I could be a selfish guy and try and take their spot, right? And it was going to work out terribly for me because I would have done a lot of a sitting. Or I could figure out that I can be a really good team guy in this situation and I can play a good shortstop and I can bat ninth and I can be on base when all these big things happen. And I'm just going to, I'm going to have the same amount of fun whether I'm hitting the bomb or whether I'm scoring the run because at the end of the day, guess what's going to happen? We're going to compete. You're all, you're all getting the same ring. We're all going to compete. We're all going to get better. And at the end of the year, we're all going to get the exact same ring. And it doesn't matter how we got there. And all of us are going to get the same amount of credit. And that's what's so awesome about it is it didn't matter. You know what I mean? It really didn't matter who was in what role. Every single person had a job. And when they, we all executed on that job, you're going to get the results that you want. Yeah. I mean, so but, like you personally, you were on a successful team. Yep. Like you played Division One. Counter Panis played Division One. Counter Panis played. He got to Division Two, right? He went to. He got all the way to Triple A. Triple A, yeah. Yeah. And does your ring look any different than his? His match right. championship ring? It's the same, same thing. thing, man. And because you guys got that ring, you got like you had scouts talking to you too, right? Yep. yep. Yeah, you Talk had you me. had major league scouts because you were on a successful team. I batted ninth. I literally batted ninth on a mid-major D1, and we had scouts at every single baseball game because we had pitchers that were drafted. We had, uh, you know, our stud guys. Team. But I was on a successful team, and I and I had played a role in that, and that's what happens. And and so at the end of the day, like I think the big thing to kind of take away from this is when it comes to travel baseball, high school and junior college, and into everything else that you guys are doing, like we need to make sure that it's it's team first, it's team oriented, right? And and all of the other stuff is going to come. But remember that individually, what you do at home is what's going to help you develop better. So if you want, if you want to speed up your development process, work harder. But like Casey said, surround yourself with people that are going to that are going to help you work hard because there are going to be days where you're going to wake up in the morning and you're not going to want to do it, and mom and dad are going to tell you to go outside and train. But you know that that conversation gets old very fast. I know that I deal with it every day. But if you have friends, legitimate friends that you have an emotional attachment to that calls you and says, Hey dude, let's go, let's go for a run. Let's go and hit. You're going to get your bag right away. You're going to ride your bike or get driven over there because you're not going to want to let your friends down because those are people that you emotionally care about. And I, I think that putting a team together with that says a lot more than putting a team together with athletic yeah. players. I yeah. love that. Yeah. I love that. And I, and I think, I think that that's such a big point to hit on because I hear it from you. I got to watch it. The cool thing for me as a spectator, I got to watch, I got to watch you, playing high school all the way through what's happening now and the, and the most fun, like, like you had fun at every level. I mean, it was every level and it, and it wasn't. And the reason why I'm so excited about having you on here is because it wasn't division one. It wasn't an NCAA college world series top yeah. eight. It was, it was really good travel team in our area. Unbelievable junior college, really, really good. You know, four year school with us. We go like awesome, awesome experience. You can take all that for the rest of your life. And I bet you, that you have way more memories and experiences that you're going to talk about for the rest of your life than a lot of people who said I went to Division One and I didn't like it. So I'm not saying I'm not saying not to go to Division One, but I'm saying that you need to find the right fit and have the experiences and the memories like you have, right? Yeah, it has to be the right fit. Yeah, the right environment. Like when you're in the World Series and it's zero zero and there's a runner on second and nobody out. Like how many other programs can you roll over to second, move the guy to third? And every kid in the dugout is calling out of the dugout, like high fiving you. Yep. Like, dude, I just rolled over. Like, what are you talking about? Like, why is everybody so pumped? But like, like once you under, start to understand those kind of things, that on a day to day basis, I think even if it's not Division One or wherever you're going, if you're a high school kid looking to go to college or you're kind of lacking motivation to work hard, just don't think about yourself. Make it about somebody else. Like if I'm in high school, like I'm going to get a scholarship for my parents to save money to go to college. And if I don't work out today, then that's more money for my parents to spend. Yep. Or our high school team has a chance to win a state championship. If I'm not in the weight room or I didn't do my job on the field because I wanted to be selfish, then we're not going to win. And I let my teammates down. Or if you're in college, it's 
I'm not doing what I need to do to help the team win, then I let everybody down. And that's that's the way I thought in college. Like, if I was in a big game and I got out I, or I made a mistake, it was like, wow, I didn't work hard enough. Yep. Like, I didn't practice well enough. I didn't work hard enough. And I just let 40 guys down because I didn't – because I skipped the extra lift or I, I didn't do as many reps as I was supposed to. Yep. If, if you – personally make it about somebody else other than yourself you're going to find a lot more success and a lot more happiness and a lot more happiness because then when you work really hard and you do become successful then you get to share it with people and share with everybody what what what's what's so much that speaks that speaks more than just winning too 100 percent. because you get to like hey you bet you bet 400 and i bet 400 like hey like we're best friends we're and we're good together because we pushed each other and that's that's what you need out of a college program or even a travel program. Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. No, that's just, good. No, 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 that's good. That's really good. I like that. Yeah. So if you're around other kids like that, even if you don't if you don't want that, then that's okay too. If that's not with you, if you want if you want to just play college baseball because you want to and it's fun, then that's okay too. There's programs for everybody. Yeah. But if you're serious, uh, it's like take a look in the mirror. Say, what am I good at? What am I not good at? How, what am I, what realistically is my role as a baseball player? How can I be the best I can be in that role? And how can I make my teammates better? Yep. And if you want to win, and if you want to win, you got to be selfless because teams that win are extremely, extremely, extremely selfless. And, and I learned that really, really quickly, you know, because yeah, I was the best. I, I was on talented teams that lost and I was on average, average talent teams that won a lot. And it, it come down, came down to um, us working together. So I, I definitely think that that's, that's something a lot of people need to take into consideration. Um, you know, you learn really, really quickly when you get to college, what you're made of. I think that that's something that not a lot of people understand. Like you, you, when you get there, I would say within the first week, you know, you know what you're about to deal with and you know oh, how accountability too. Everything's about accountability, you know, and I know a lot of times I know a lot of times if, if our grades were slipping or, you know, like it, we they were on us right away. Like it was pretty much right away. Like, hey, what's going on in your grades? Like, do you need help or are you just not doing your work? Or, you know, I remember like I had an 8 a.m. class in the in the same building that my head coach was. And I remember getting to class right on time and he was standing there waiting for us just to make sure that the five guys that run the baseball team were at that class that morning. Like there's a lot more that goes into this whole thing when you move on to the next level than just playing baseball. And there's a lot, lot more than it. it it's a, and, and it's a brotherhood. And I will tell you this, and, and this is a really good story before we start to wrap up, is there's a guy that lives in Alberta um, in Canada. He lives really, really far from here. And he is one of my absolute best teammates I've ever played with. Um, I will talk to that guy for the rest of my life. Um, his name is Brooklyn Foster and we always talk about the memories that we have when we played. And it's so funny because the best play that we ever made together, we practiced every single week, consistently, repetitively. We never, ever, ever did it in a game until the conference championship where it was kind of on a whim and we just threw it out there and we made a successful play. And it's so funny because I, you know, I'm high fiving him. He's high fiving me. Everybody's going nuts, but we looked at the very end of the, of the season and we won the championship and we went back and we looked and it's so funny because he was drafted out of high school and I wasn't him and I had the exact same stat line in the entire tournament. And, and the cool thing about that That's was it, it's so, amazing. it's so crazy how it all happened because like he was the you know top of the order guy crushing baseballs. I was the bottom of the order guy just kind of getting on base and we made the big play together because we practiced it together a lot and we got really comfortable with it that we trusted each other and we were friends and we liked each other. And then it happened to work out that the stats lined up the exact same too. So like my point behind that is when we looked at our team in general, we looked at him and I together as friends, it really came down to how can we get involved together to make a play happen? What, so you guys both got better because you worked hard together. We trust each other. And that's now, the yep. Yeah. Now, if you don't do that and you and you guys aren't friends and you do it completely separately, then then you guys probably both aren't better off at all from it. But or, because you guys 
because you guys were both good teammates and came yeah. together, it's a win-win. You guys were both better off, and your team was better off. It's a it's a triple win, honestly. And then the stats lined up, which happens to be a bonus. But but imagine if I make the call to him. Imagine if I make that call. The back it was a back pick. So imagine if I make that back pick call to him, and in his mind he's thinking, "This dude's crazy. There's absolutely no way this is gonna work." Yeah. Then what happens? Yeah. Then you you throw the ball into the center in center field or whatever, and you lose and. In two years that him and I played together, we made the play one time, and it was in a conference championship game when we were tied. And, and I'll tell you, it's worth it. and it was worth it, and we ended up winning, and it was great. But the big point behind that was my trust in him and his trust in me as teammates and as friends and as brothers was the reason why we were successful. And it had nothing to do with his arm strength. It had nothing to do with my glove work. Had it absolutely nothing to do with any of that. It literally came down to him and I made a call together. I believed in him. He believed in me, and we made it happen. And I think at the end of the day, when you look at the development of 10, 11, and 12-year-old kids, the best thing that you can teach your, your son and your team is to work hard, like you said at the very, very beginning, number one. And number two is love your teammates like they're your family, and they are your friends. And when you're going into battle in a, in a tournament – it's your team against your team. It's not your team against anybody else. And you're with your brothers and with your, and you're with your friends and you're working towards the same purpose and the same goal. And if we can instill that in youth athletes right now, we're not only going to see better athletes, but then when they get out, we're going to see better people. And they're going to come back to us in 20, 15, 20 years. And they're going to say, man, what you taught me when I was 12 years old still sits with me today. And that happened to me. My summer baseball coach literally changed my life. I love that guy to death. And I know for you, your summer team changed your life and your and your junior college team changed your life. And those are friends that you're going to have for the rest of your life. And that's ultimately what this, this is all about. This isn't about personal accolades and scholarships. Stop chasing the scholarship, right? If it happens, it happens. And if you do the work, guess what? It's going to happen for you. But you got to look at the things that are more important. You got to look at who your relationships are with. You got to look at, you know, are you, are you with the, with the people that have the same common goal? And are you guys striding or striving to be the best? And are your teammates looking out for your best interest as well? Right. And I think that's such a big point. So before we recap, is there anything else that you want to add into, you know, uh, and things about, like, that? like the second recruiting process, like going yeah. to Las Vegas? Yeah, yeah. I, want, I do. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So like at on trip, I had, I had a decent amount of offers to go to other schools, good scholarship offers. Uh, I had, I'm not going to say what schools. I don't want to do that, but uh, I had scholarship offers to go play high-level schools. Some were good, some weren't. And if you look at some of the schools that I had and then to wonder why I picked Division Three, some people would be like, what are you doing? Like, why would you – like, why Division Three? And for me, uh, when I went on my visit to Oswego, the first thing the coach told me, well, it made me love it, is that he said, you're going to love every player on the team. Every single kid on the team loves everybody. It's a great environment. Everyone loves everyone. Great brotherhood. And we're going to work harder than every team in the country. And right there, I was like, I was like, this is awesome. Like, this is exactly what I want. Yep. This is, this is exactly what I'm looking for. And at Division Three. There's uh, SUNY public school. We had a big roster. So not every guy is going to buy into what you're doing because it's Division three. There's no scholarships. But the top 20, 25 guys on the roster, every single guy wanted, It's we're going to win the, the conference. We're going to go to the regional, and we're going to go to the World Series. We're going to try, and we're going to try and win it. Yep. Every, every practice, it's, it's we're going to, like, how can we get to the World Series? Every practice, every workout, and same thing at end trip. If you're not doing it, you're falling behind, and you're like, if you're not, what do you say, hop on the train or get off? Yeah, you're either getting on the train or you're getting yeah, off. Yeah, you're either getting on or you're getting off. And for me, that was like, I I couldn't not pick that school. Right. Even though it was Division Three, I had like I had to, I because a I was going to play there. I had a chance to play on a team that had been to the World Series the last two years in a row and B I had a chance to go to a team that won. Yep. So, so why would I go anywhere else 
I don't, like, and Oswego was better financially for me too, which plays a part in it, and academically. So I could play. Uh, I was a good program, great coach, good academics, financially feasible. So uh, it checks all four boxes. So why could I say like why would I say no to that? Yep. That's ultimately ultimately why I made this the decision, and I had the chance to win a conference championship against Cortland, who's ranked top ten in the country every single year. They have the longest running streak in college baseball, Division One, Two, or Three, of going to the conference tournament, longest streak in college baseball history, and we beat them. Yeah, and it you know like and you go and you win a conference and you go to the regional. But like, let's say I go to some Division two school and I, I barely even make it to a conference championship, and like, what? There's no memories from that. Yep. There's yeah. no memories from that. There's no. I don't like. I have no connection with teammates. So like, just in my recruiting process, I said I'm going to Division three because I can play, and I love everything about it. I showed up, and the coach said like, we're all about working hard. And like, if you look, like, if you look at Cortland's roster and you look at ours, and here's another thing about Division Three, like, if you play a weekend series against SUNY Cortland, all their guys throw 88 or higher. Yep. So like, what, like, so if you're going to a bad Division One just because you say you play Division One, like, you're not even playing as good a baseball. It's it's not even it's not nearly as good. I mean, I, I, I for good. sure. I'm not even exaggerating. I'm being completely honest. I I for sure think that. Us at us, we go could compete with some division one schools. I agree with that 100%. I, because I, I wouldn't, I'm not going to say win, but we can compete for sure. I agree with that because, because you guys figure these, these lower D1 schools are pumping 80 guys that are throwing 84 to 85, you know, yeah, and like, in yeah, Cortland's out there, they're throwing 88 to 90, and you guys at and at trip were throwing 90, 93, and you know, you guys got people at Oswego that are throwing hard too. I mean, that's that's the thing. Like these top, yeah, so that's better baseball than you would go to if you went to a poor Division One school just because you wanted to play Division One. So like, I, I still ended up playing better baseball. And with Division Three, like the bottom teams are pretty bad. Like you will get some bad teams, but the good teams are just as good. Yep. Like every every pitcher you'll see on Corlin's roster is 88 or higher. Yep. See, see, like, where else would you see Lefty sitting 92? And, like, why I chose Oswego over them was because Oswego was – it's it was all about the environment and the culture and the, and the hard work. And, uh, like, that appealed more to me than Cortland did. Right. Even yeah. though they're that good. Right. It was, it was like I went on my visit to Cortland and I was like, wow, this team wins. Like, this is everything I want. Like, they're, they're a winner. And then, like, you start to find out things. Like, you start to find out what you want. And it, like, really made me realize what I wanted in a program. Right. And for me, I wanted, I wanted to be the guy that played on the team that worked hard, that loved my teammates, rather than be on the super talented team where I might not play, where my teammates aren't as good. And we ended up winning because of it. Like I went to Oswego and we ended up winning. And Oswego three times in a row conference championships just because of the environment that they've created there. So I think that just says a lot about picking your school. Like environment, environment and culture will translate into wins and better players. Yep. And like that's the decision that you need to make as a kid. It's it's what environment am I going into? athletically financially will i play and is it a successful school yeah no doubt 100 percent. and i'm gonna um i'm gonna kind of go into that too and i'll recap everything kind of bring it all together but but it seems like and i and i like that we went over this is the the thing with you and the thing that i i have i've learned and what i want everybody to understand is it's all about the fit and it has to do with the fit do you fit in the organization the program the travel the travel team the high school program you know, the, the junior college, the division one, whatever level you're at, do you fit right now? You're looking at, you got division one, you got division two, you got division three, you got NAI schools, you got three different levels of junior college. There are opportunities everywhere, right? But a lot of people are turned off at playing that extra four years because they're not going to division one school or whatever it is. Find what's going to fit for you. 
And the one thing I like that Casey said was he could have went to a team that won right away, which is a big value for him, or he could, or he went to a coach that he liked the relationship with. He liked the relationship with his coach because of the values that his coach gave him rather than using the prestige of, of just winning. And I think the big thing for a lot of you guys is kind of just understanding that in order to be successful, you have to find what fits for you. If you go to a program where you can't flourish or you don't feel like you can flourish, then you're putting yourself in a situation where you know you need to get out of there and you made the wrong choice. But if we do the, the smart move on the front end of let's let's make decisions based on what's going to benefit my career and give the values and what I want. And I think that that's going to help a lot. So, so choosing us, we go for you over Cortland. Cortland's a national powerhouse division level. They, they won a national championship only a couple of years ago, five years ago. But so is us. We go now. And yeah, in, in the cool, yeah, but it's, it's because it's not because of, I mean, I, I don't want to discredit anybody. Sure. Cause everyone there is talented, but like, it's not really? because talent why they're a successful program now it's about the culture and the environment yep. and as we go and I, and I know this a lot of guys will leave division one to go to Cortland, mm-hmm. and and a lot of guys will go from juco to, to us we go and it seems like and I, I, I like i think Cortland's great i think they're awesome i think their program is really good too i like the culture that you guys have because when you go look at your roster versus their roster they may have more talented guys but yeah, you for have sure. a really good culture, and that's why you guys compete. I mean, who knows? Maybe out of 10 games, you guys split five and five. Who knows? But I think that you guys compete together because of the culture that you guys have created. So so recapping everything, and, and um, I just want to kind of go into – when you're picking travel ball, pick what fits. Not A, not B, not national. Pick what fits for you that your kid is going to get better. If he's a national-level player, if he's a national-level – go ahead. Where you can play, like where – Play and a lot. You're going to be able to play. Yeah. So, so if you're a national level player and you're going to play every game and you're going to be challenged, go do that. But if you're not at that level yet and you're going to sit the bench, then, then you may need to find a team that you can compete with. Um, for the, for choosing colleges, don't discredit any level. Every level matters. And in finding the right fit for you, I think is such a big deal. Um, you know, the junior college route for a lot of guys is great, especially if they're in, in cold weather areas where we're unable to develop as much as the kids in the South. I think going junior college is great for sure. Um, and then when you're picking your four-year school, throw the level out. Throw it, it, When you go into it, go into it as how can I develop a relationship with the coach and with the team that's there? Throw Division One, Two, Three NAI out. Throw it out the window. When you walk onto the campus, don't even think about that. I think that's such a big deal to take away from this. Um, Casey, you have a lifetime of memories because of your experiences. You have a lifetime of friendships and brotherhoods with people. You have such – a great baseball career and a great path that you've been on. And it is local travel, junior college, division three. And that's something that I want everybody to take away from this today. Local junior college. Local junior college. I didn't go away. Yep. And and so the experiences that you had, you can take away for the rest of your life because you surrounded yourself with people that were going to make you better. And so, and so I'll, I'll let you kind of take the, the last final remarks, but I just want to thank you for being on here. This is a really, really, really good talk for everybody that that does the travel and, and wants their kids to play in college. I think this was awesome. Um, but I'll leave you with the final remarks, and then we'll kind of close it up. Yeah, I in four years, I went to a World Series national championship game, won a conference title, went to an NCAA regional. And I would much rather do that than go somewhere where I would hate it. Uh, all four years of college, I've loved every kid I've played with, loved all my coaches, and I don't regret any decision that I've made. I love everything about all four years of college that I that I had, baseball wise, academic wise, because I made the right choices. I would I would rather do what I did than pick another school or another route and hate it or leave my school and not enjoy it or not play because I made the wrong choice just because I wanted to play at a higher level like division one, division two. So go, go where you're going to fit in, where you're going to love your teammates, where you're going to love your coach. And I was listening to something the other day that said, like when you, when you really start to be successful in life is when your thoughts, your words and your actions can all line up. Yep. I, I think when you can put all three of those things together. And like I said, a couple of times earlier about surrounding yourself with people that want what you want find out what you want find out what your 
role is to find out who you are as a player, as a person, and then surround yourself with people like that, regardless of what level of baseball it's at. Because playing Juco in Division Three was more fun. I have more friends. I have more memories. I have more success from that than I would if I picked a different school. Right. So I, I think that that's such a big takeaway, and, and I hope that everybody that listened and learned from this um, – listen to the whole thing. I think it's big. Um, I'm going to go back and listen to it again because I think this is a great conversation to have. But uh, Case, I want to thank you for being on here today. Um, I really, really appreciate you taking the time to, to jump on here and talk about your experiences and your stories too. I think that a lot of people can learn from that. So uh, if you, if anybody listening in has any questions, um, please email us um, or give us a call and we'll do everything that we can to kind of get more information for you and, and from you guys to figure out how we can help you. Um, we're definitely here to aid in the recruiting process if anybody needs that. But um, again, thanks, Case, for being on here and uh, talk to you soon. Yep, thanks. All right, man. Take care.